Hey, I'm Pete Priebus with Electric Bike Report, and I'm here with Marissa Muller, who's riding across the country with this solar-powered electric bike. 3,100 plus miles from California to Washington, D.C. So, pretty amazing adventure. And we're here today in Sedona, Arizona, Electric Bike Report headquarters. And I uh, just wanted to ask Marissa a couple questions and find out more about her wild adventure. So, um, first of all, Marissa, what, what made you decide to do uh, an adventure like this? Yeah, it's a great question. So I uh, was working for a company and traveling quite a bit, actually over traveled. So three weeks of the month, I was in and out of airplanes, time zones and hotels, and just hit a breaking point, uh, sick on one trip, fighting the flu at 3am, um, running a fever, started visualizing where would I rather be, obviously not here sick in a hotel room. And this dream percolated right back up, I'd rather be on my bike crossing the country. I've been dreaming about this for five years, and in that moment, I became very frustrated with myself. I was tired of hearing this talk and never taking action. So at 3 a.m. on that sickly night, I gave myself a deadline, one week to see if I get any traction, mm -hmm. and if I could, pursue it, if not, bury it. And uh, through LinkedIn, I actually was able to find the right contact at Specialized, Scott Stroot. Mm -hmm. And uh, he invited me down to Specialized, test rode the bike, fell in love with it, told him about my journey, uh -huh. he fell in love with that. And uh, the rest is history. Wow. It's got the momentum and then reach out to SunPower to get the solar underway. Wow. So yeah, that's kind of what initiated it. Yeah. So kind of hitting my all time wellness low uh -huh. and feeling off balance yeah. physically and mentally and looking to kind of build that strength back through yeah. a journey of a thousand miles. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, I know that you're, you, you know, you want to promote wellness and you want to, to get out and to uh, visit, you know, different groups along the way. Um, can you talk a little bit more about uh, how you're going to do that and, and sort of the, um, the different ways that you're, you're contacting those people and getting those things going? Sure. So the metrics for success are really the 3,000 miles. Um, so that's just kind of the, the mental grind to get through that goal. Um, the next one is having 20 public or private meetings mm -hmm. and having that dialogue around wellness mm -hmm. and can kind of concluding around that one revolution just takes one movement yeah. to make a change. So um, in terms of how I'm engaging, I truly am just biking into the towns for the sake my dates are somewhat in flux, mm -hmm. uh, depending on any issues that might arise. And so I just go typically to the city hall. I was able to meet in San Bernardino and uh, Palm Springs meet with the mayor's office and have a dialogue. So it was pretty interesting. Um, some of the struggles San Bernardino or challenges that they're facing is with the financial issue, the bankruptcy they filed in 09 and how they're kind of pulling themselves out of it and the impact it does have socially on the wellness of the community there. Uh, crimes, you know, spiked. And so learning different ways that they have food trucks coming through and getting the city hall mm -hmm. revamped. So that was a great learning. And Palm Springs, their big wellness issue is around water. Mm -hmm. And so they're taking some big strides to cut back on water use. Yeah. Um, in terms of the private meeting I've had, so far it's been with Patagonia. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what kickstarted the toll trip and why I started in Ventura. Wow. I felt that they're kind of the, the four leaders of sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, they built the whole company on the notion, hey, let's do good for the environment. Let's do good and do well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's kind of the whole thing of the personal to community wellness. And I think if you're personally feeling at your best fit, healthy, yeah. you have a better perspective towards the environment and take better action. Excellent. Yeah. So um, this is, uh, you, you started in Ventura, California, and now we're in Sedona, Arizona, and you're going all the way to Washington, D.C. Um, so, so far, what have been the highlights of the trip? What's, what has surprised you and, and what's uh, been the most fun and, and those kinds of things? What would you say that is? Yeah, so I've made, what, 500 miles, just over 500 miles, so a six of the trip done, and some of the highlights, just that the bike works. It really blows my mind every time it's a sunny day, and I can see at a red light, or if I'm stopped, the percentage of the battery mm -hmm. go up. So it's a pretty incredible feeling, and that is the biggest reward, that it actually is charging, and it's functioning well. Um, some other highlights or perhaps a challenge was getting through the desert. Uh -huh. So crossing from Palm Springs and uh, actually through Arizona. Uh -huh. It was hot. Yeah. I think I hit their all-time high so far, 113 degrees. Um, oh, I've had some issues because I was on the interstate, so a lot of blown out tires oh, yeah. and the mesh within the tires had a little fun with my rear wheel, which is the most complex to change. 
So uh, that was exciting for certain. Um, but the most rewarding just came what two days ago mm -hmm. as I biked into Prescott. Uh -huh. So it was you know really hot, a lot of just shrubs, you know desert low desert landscape, uh -huh. and seeing trees. I've never appreciated <laughs> trees more in my life and the cool breeze. Yeah. So the visual eye candy coming up the pass into Prescott was incredible. And then now coming into Sedona and seeing the red rock, I think I biked very slowly for the sake I was taking a million photos. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. So um, you've you've done about 500 miles now, um, and one of the one of the readers of Electric Bike Report wanted to know, um, you know, first of all, what's the mindset for doing a big tour like this? You know, most of us are just commuting around town. You know, maybe we're two hours on the bike, but you're on the bike for long periods of time, and and so I guess first of all, the mindset, and then also how do you sort of meter your um, your power as well as the the bike's power you know is there a nice balance that you've kind of uh, gotten into the groove with on on the trip yeah great questions and that's part of the journey for me is that mind strength mm -hmm. you know boosting my mental muscles uh so yeah it's been a journey already and it's all bite-sized pieces i actually thinking of dc is i can't even imagine going to dc mm -hmm. it's all about every day and clocking you know 60 70 miles each day on average mm -hmm. And so that's just my mental achievement, you know, just get there, get safely to the destination and uh, look yeah. at the next day from there. So it's really bite-sized pieces mm -hmm. to achieve the goal. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the power output and, and what I'm doing, I definitely wanted to get fit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that mental wellness, but also the physical aspect. Mm -hmm. So I'm still fine tuning that, but I get about 60 or 70% support from the motor. Mm -hmm. So quite a su substantial amount. Uh -huh. But, you know, the weight is there. So the bike weighs 50 pounds, the trailer is 55, the solar panels another 10. Uh -huh. So there's some pull. So I definitely do rely on the motor. Um, I think my, I'm getting stronger every day. So I'll definitely start tapering that down. Um, I do have a lot of tech on me. So I can track my heart rate and see how that's looking to oh, see yeah. how much effort I'm putting out. Uh -huh. But I don't actually have the, the power to see how much I'm putting versus sure. the motor. So that's yeah. a bit of a mystery, but yeah. my own personal fatigue is uh -huh. how I'm gauging it currently. Yeah. So um, on an average day, um, are you using uh, just one battery pack? Like say, say it's a nice sunny day. Um, is, it, is it just one battery pack and you're able to you know, roll into town with some, some, uh, some juice left? Or do you have to swap battery packs for say a 60 or 70 mile day? Oh, I could go forever on one battery pack. So it's been pretty phenomenal. So I do have a spare just in case it's a foggy, rainy day. Yeah. A typical range um, without any solar is 20 to 25 miles per battery. So I can get, you know, 45 miles, let's say, on both batteries. But if it's a sunny day and you're connected to the solar panel, which is constantly recharging the battery, um, I biked over 100 miles naturally through the desert and yeah. I arrived at the hotel with 75% still available on the battery. Wow. So I could go continually. I just biked today. I think I gained 3,000 in elevation yeah. from Prescott right. to Sedona. Yeah. And I arrived, I think, with 72% wow. still to go. So, you know, the, the only way, if I'm running dry, I, I just take a pause. Mm -hmm. And I typically charge 1% per minute okay. if the sun's really out, holding strong. Wow. And the bike, we engineered it so it matched pretty well the motor is 250 watts the rear hub motor and the solar panel here is 240 watts so it's pretty much in parallel mm -hmm. granted you know with solar you need optimal conditions perfect sun yeah. right angle to the sun no shading uh -huh. so i'm not always pulling 240 but overall yeah. the batteries last forever wow. one battery can go a long day that's really amazing. I mean, that's that's really impressive. Um, and and the um, the size of the battery. Uh, I think you said it was around 500 watt hours. Is, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Specialized Turbo S? It looks like a pretty impressive bike. It is a mean machine. So as I was mentioning earlier, when I was sick that one night in the hotel room, I knew the exact bike I wanted to ride, and it was a Specialized Turbo. For the sake, I think they've done a great job uh, with the design and then the top of the line components and just the whole fit and feel. Um, so yeah, it's been a great experience. Specialized was kind enough to give me one of their body geometry fits. Mm -hmm. So um, measuring seat bones to have the right seat size mm -hmm. to flexibility, 
core strength and then putting me on a trainer bike and doing 3D imagery of me to really see how I would fit into it and make it comfortable. So Aaron there at Specialized did a fantastic job. 500 miles, I feel great. Um, the bike runs smooth. It's super quiet. And again, a disguise of why people don't even realize it's an electric bike. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, stealth and pretty powerful. So all around incredible. I hope all of you can test ride it. The first uh, few seconds, everyone that has ridden it, it's just this wow effect. Wow. It's quite a boost. Yeah. yeah feels great. <laughs> And one more question as far as the, uh, the, the normal day, um, you're riding 60 to 70 miles. Um, what do you think your average speed is say on a, uh, on a not really mountainous day, but like on a relatively flat day? Yeah. Average speed is probably 19 miles per hour. So, um, I was doing some training rides before I left and I had a pack of cyclists, hardcore cyclists in their whole kit big thigh muscles and they actually were drafting me um so yeah the bike does haul it moves quick and um i don't feel too fatigued so back to your earlier question i definitely can bring the support down yeah. so i can get stronger physically myself um, a lot of people want to know about the the solar panel that you've put together here um, it's very lightweight uh, it's like about 10 pounds with the frame i believe and um you know a lot of people want to know was it difficult to put together and, and set up to be charging the bike as you ride and um, i know that your dad had something to do with it too <laughs> that's right so my background is not in engineering uh, marketing is what i've done so um, I definitely don't have that strength and relied on SunPower. So I reached out to SunPower, a local solar company in the Bay Area. They actually manufacture the most efficient solar cells, um, I'd say globally actually. And so I knew that, you know, the whole bike, everything I'm doing is around efficiency. So I wanted the most optimal cells. So I tip my hat to two engineers at SunPower, Kingsley and Kat. And uh, they are the ones that helped me engineer this. Uh, it's actually two solar panels. It looks like it's one just because it's on um, one sheet here, but we made two flexible solar panels primarily because of the voltage that the battery can receive. It's a 36 volt battery. And so we were boosting too much voltage off one solar panel. So we split it in two and have two charge controllers underneath, okay. uh, which convert it to that lithium ion charge of the battery. So yeah, I relied on Kingsley and Kat at SunPower. And then like you said, my dad, we spent a lot of time in the uh, garage working together. He was definitely the leader. I was the follower of the support team. So after we built this flexible, high efficient solar panel, dad and I then wired it. And you can actually see it's a direct line of cabling coming through here, feeding under here. And it's uh, direct into the battery charge station. So. Traditionally, a Turbo S, you can charge it two ways, one through this port, or you can disengage the battery and just bring it into your house and charge it. So it was pretty phenomenal. We were able to toggle right in here and uh, charge on the fly. So I'm constantly recharging as if I have an outlet with me. Instead, right. it's the sun. That's my outlet. So with the, the solar panel, have you had any issues with the wind? I mean, has it uh, uh, created some weird handling uh, with the trailer and such? Yeah, I was worried about that myself. Um, so if the wind does pick up, and I've actually just had windy days the past two days, um, I can angle the solar panel for a better exposure to the sun, up to 20 degrees. But I definitely lay it flat if there's wind bursts or gusts, just because I don't want that sail and for it to pull off. Uh, but I feel completely in control and um, confident riding the bike. It, that doesn't actually move me too much. I think I have a lot of weight as well, just kind of holds it down. And then the fairing here does a pretty good job just cutting through the wind. But today I had some side winds, and so you definitely felt yourself constantly recorrecting. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's a pretty sturdy rig. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just tunnel right through it. Yeah. So with the fairing, um, do you, I mean, get into sort of a tuck position behind uh, the fairing to be fairly aero, I guess? Yeah, yeah, it is a bit lower. I wish it came up, the fairing came a little higher up. Uh -huh. But yeah, I do go into the tuck, especially going down the hills today was so much fun. Yeah. And I was just bombing. I wish someone took a video or a photo of that one. Uh, but I definitely do. And I can feel the difference once yeah. I do get behind that. And then also bugs, oh, yeah. you know, it does save me on uh, <laughs> other things hitting me. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so speaking of people taking uh, photos and videos and such, um, how, what's the reaction like been um, out on the open road? That, how does the general public react to, you know, seeing a, a solar powered electric bike? Yeah, I'd say everyone's just curious um, and everyone's eager to diagnose what it 
exactly is, and I've had some great commentary. Uh, the bike is so well engineered and designed that a lot of people don't even know it's an electric bike. Mm -hmm. And so some of the banter, oh, you got a solar panel, so when you're camping, you can charge all of your, your appliances, or do you sleep on top of that? <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, everyone's been really curious, engaged, and supportive. Uh, it was just in Cottonwood uh -huh. here in Arizona. Uh, taking a little break and a gentleman and his dog just couldn't get enough and we talked a lot about solar solar at his house electric vehicles so it really is sparking a dialogue and that's yeah. what i was looking for Good. and hopefully get people curious enough to take the next step and potentially you know put some renewables into their home yeah all right so i have a traditional garmin so i'm able to track um, my distance my cadence elevation etc um, in the middle i have my iphone 6 and optrix makes a great case totally water resistant and uh, mounts on the bike handlebars and then also has accessory lenses. So I'm able to capture everything. Um, then the turbo has their own meter. So I'm able to see the percent of the battery. That's the main thing I'm gaining, but they also have speed and other features there. And then I can toggle to an eco mode or hundred percent support. So really utilize the motor and uh, take advantage when I need it. Then you'll see kind of a uh, on the base by the stem, the spot device. So that is a satellite signal that family and friends are able to track me. Every two and a half minutes, there's an update on where I'm at. And then I do have the Recon Jet sunglasses. They have a heads up display. So they're quite similar to the Google Glass. And right here on my bottom right eye, I can see kind of a hologram or an image that appears with all of my metrics. A cool feature that I use often is the photography and videography. So I can just slide here and, and take photos as I go. I then do also have the Fitbit Surge, and really here I utilize the heart rate monitor and uh, just some other health features. I can pair it with Strava as well, so I am definitely tracking everything uh, more than I probably need to. But with all high tech, you got to go simple. And I am taking my ukulele on the trip because I'm not good and I want to get good. A one hit wonder. My goal is to learn one song by the time I make it to DC. And uh, holding this mic and playing with these glasses is probably not the easiest thing. But uh, keeping it simple here and hopefully learning a tune. And then uh, keeping in tune with how I'm doing with all these other tech pieces here. All right. Well, well, thank you, Marissa. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to to chat and uh, to help you know help us understand more about your amazing adventure. It really is is very impressive, and uh, I'm so glad that you're out here doing it. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm having fun and congrats to you. It's great to get the word out around electric bikes. It is the future, so I hope everyone jumps on board and gets riding.